Okay, so this is a take two. <laughs> Didn't like my first presentation. Anyways, so it's a handyman 406 here. So we're going to show you guys how to convert an alternator uh, into a hybrid alternate. Well, what I'm calling a hybrid alternator because it's using permanent magnets along with the magnetic field that it generates um, through the brushes. And the reason I'm doing that is to kind of build a self-exciting alternator. And um, yeah, so let me kind of show you what I'm doing here and how I, first of all, let's look at the rotor. Um, so this rotor, all I've done, and uh, it's very important that you use small magnets like these. And I think I bought all these magnets for, oh, probably less than five bucks shipped. Okay. And there's like a hundred magnets here. So there's a lot of conversions you can do. You don't need to buy this many. Just enough to do the rotor. Anyways. So uh, these are quarter inch magnets and they, what I've done here is I've drilled quarter inch holes. Okay, make them as even as possible. And uh, most people could probably do a better job than I could, um, or at least as good of a job. I mean, get as even as you, po as you possibly can. Obviously I didn't get them perfect. I guess it doesn't matter because this one still works. Um, and then you need to fire, uh, before you glue them in, you need to figure out what the orientation of these magnets are going to be. And that's very important because you don't want, when you energize these brushes, you don't want a south facing pole to have a north facing pole when it's energized. You know what I'm saying? Because alternators, if you guys don't already know, um, if you're on my channel, you probably do already know these things. But if you don't already know these things, uh, an alternator is just that. It alternates, okay? So each pole is alternating in its current. There's north, south, north, south, north, south. And that's what you want to achieve with these little babies as well. You want to achieve a north and a south and a north and a south. Now, magnets, if you guys ever played around with magnets, you know that one side repels, can't get those two to stick. The other sides attract, attract. And this north and the south will always attract one another, okay? And uh, two souths or two norths will always repel. And uh, so the way I figured out how to orientate these is you apply the current. Well, first of all, you have to figure out where which current is going where. All right. So we know that the ground. Well, pull out your tester. On this particular alternator and you put the continuity and you're going to figure this out. You're going to you're going to go to ground. and You're going to figure out which one of these. Gosh, is there enough light? Can you guys see that? All right, that was a little weird. But anyways, this top one is ground, okay? Boy, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, into a well-lit area, and I just don't think it's enough light. So, uh, like I was saying, this top brush happens to be negative this one's hooked to the field so this one's positive okay this is where the positive brush now this has been modified some alternators are automatically like that some are not and you have to modify them to make sure that the field current has a positive or has continuity between this this uh little tab back here and uh where your brush connects um it, maybe we'll get into that in the future um, actually, I go through that pretty thoroughly in some of my past videos. So if you guys aren't already a subscriber, you might want to subscribe and, and check those out um, if you have a hard time uh, kind of figuring it out. Uh, so anyways, this is the negative and the one below is the positive. So what we want to do is you take your rotor. Okay, got the rotor here and the uppermost one. See, this is going to go in the case like so. Okay, so the uppermost brush ring is going to be your negative. This is going to be your positive. So you hook your battery up negative positive and it'll impart a magnetic field on this coil. And it's just as simple as taking a magnet and then and just dropping it onto the, onto this, I don't know what you call these, a fin, a tooth, whatever, a pole. And, uh, well, doggone it. 
No, for heaven's sakes. All right. So these magnets are. So anyways, you take a magnet and you drop it on there and that gives you, it will automatically orientate itself in the correct direction. In other words, if this turns out that this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole, uh, when you drop it, the North Pole will face up on the magnet automatically. It'll turn itself in the air before it lands and 100% uh, reliable. Well, maybe 90% reliable. You're going to want to go back and check each and every one of them with the old, you know, I can feel that those are attracting and they're all attracting because it's iron. Actually, those repel, I can feel those repel and I can feel that those are retracting, attracting, those are repelling, those are attracting and so on and so forth. And that's how you check them. All right, so with that part all finished and you got your magnets all glued in, by the way, I just used JB Weld. It worked out so good. I think there's like metal filings in JB Weld because once you get the magnet stuck in there, the JB Weld just kind of sucks its way in there. And you want to make sure these magnets are, at the very least, slightly below the surface. Okay, so then later you can take a file and file off that JB Weld and um, so there's no interference with the uh, statters. All right, so then you get your statter or you get your, excuse me, your rotor. You put that back in there with your brushes intact. And then we get to this little bit right here. All right. And by the way, the results for the last wind generator, I will put them, let me see, maybe, let me get my finger orientated. I'll put them right here, up in the corner here. And that'll just kind of show you guys um, the kind of results I was getting from the last one. Uh, those results that I've been promising you guys forever. Haven't got around to it. Um, mainly because I haven't had any wind. But we had a good, pretty good little windstorm the other day. And uh, my alternator was kicking off pretty good. Got some results from it. And uh, give you guys something to look at and expect to sort of get on your own as well. Alright, so... So bridge rectifier, that's all we have here. All right, uh, just screw it to the back of one of these, or back of, to the back of the alternator, and that kind of gives it a heat sink as well. And uh, we don't have a rectifier on the inside of this thing because we don't need it. We're going three phase power all the way to the battery, and then we're gonna rectify it at the battery, okay? Most of you guys know that concept. But we're gonna take the three phase power, and we are gonna rectify it, actually. I can get that to stay just for demonstration purposes. So we have our three-phase power hooked to the three-phase here. This, um, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is your negative pole. This is your positive pole for your DC current. Negative, positive. All right, so the negative, you can just ground out to the case. Boom, just like that. Good enough. All right, your positive, you get a, well, all right. So I have my wires coming out of the wrong hole, but you know those little tabs I showed you? I use this alternator as a... You're gonna hook your positive to the tab. Is this too confusing for you guys? I'm kind of using two alternators to explain something, but I don't think it's too difficult. Um, I hope I'm hope I'm not making this too difficult. So, anyways, so yeah, this goes to the field. And what you're doing is when this begins to spin, all right, these permanent magnets impart a slight field current to your rotor, all right. With, or to your statter, excuse me. Your rotor imparts a slight magnetic field to the statter. And as it begins to turn, that slight magnetic charge, uh, current, excuse me, um, is converted to DC current, goes right back into your field current, into your brushes, which then begins to energize the center field, all right? And which gives it more magnetism, which gives it more current, which gives it more magnetism, which gives it more current, it's a cascading effect, so you just it just instantly just turns itself on, and without any switches otherwise at all, um, you have a way of generating power uh, to energize the field current. Not only energize the field current, but begin to generate power for your wind generator. And in a future gener in a future video, this hopefully won't be more than three or four parts, but we're gonna build an airframe for this, and we're gonna get it up in the air. And we're going to get some real time numbers for this, okay? And uh, like I said, um, 
if uh, I'm constantly trying to improve my videos so if uh, if you guys see anything I'm doing wrong or doing right um, you know feel free to put that in the comments below just kind of you know help me to improve my videos and and to kind of give you guys better content um, and that's kind of what I'm aiming for here so um, and with that um, I guess we'll just sign off we'll leave this video kind of as a short little video but that's step one we're gonna put this thing together um, and step two we're gonna make the airframe we're gonna get a blade on it and I got some videos on blades on how to make those you guys might want to check those out um, I got two different types of blades and um, in a future video we're also gonna be showing you how to make a furling blade a blade that furls out of the wind instead of a tail that furls out of the wind uh, the latter I'm not too fond of the former I love the idea of the blades for like I've made a couple of them in the past that I've had kind of mixed success with and uh, we're gonna attempt to make another one and uh, see how we can get that all put together and uh, see how we can make it work and uh, anyways thanks guys and uh, we'll see you on the next one real soon here